Thanks everyone for coming. I'm Yu Ming Zhao from IQC. Today I will present a joint work with Connor Paddock, William Slofstra, and Yang Chen Zhou on an operate algebraic formulation of self testing. I will first state the formal definition of self testing, the standard definition, discuss its achievements as well as limitations. Then I will propose our operator algebraic formulation in terms of abstract states on C star algebras. Let's start with some background materials. In a bipartisan Bell scenario, two non interacting parties, Alice and Bob, each receive inputs from some finite sets X and Y and return output from some finite sets A and B. The behavior in this scenario is described by this probability P A B X Y that they output A B on input X Y. The collection of these conditional probabilities is called a correlation. In quantum mechanics, Alice and Bob's actions can be described by can be modeled by quantum uh, quantum measurements, bipartisan quantum measurements, also known as quantum models. In a quantum model, Alice and Bob share an entangled state psi. On each input X, Alice has a P O V M. Indexed by S with indexed by X with outcomes in A, similar for Bob, and this system is finite dimensional. The conditional probabilities are given by Born's rule. Correlations can be achieved by quantum models are called quantum correlations. We use CQ to denote the set of all quantum correlations. It is a convex set but not closed, so we are. Mainly interested in extreme points of this convex set. You can actually directly observe quantum correlations from Alice and Bob's actions by just repeating this measurement process, but you cannot observe the underlying quantum models. In fact, typically, there are many different quantum models that can achieve the same quantum correlation. It is a remarkable fact that. Some correlations have a unique underlying quantum model. Such correlation is called a self test. Of course, when someone says something is unique, you should be skeptical. Maybe they mean s unique up to something, right? Changing the, local, changing the basis of the local systems, which is a purely mathematical manipulation, or adding auxiliary state on this system. All those operations do not change the observable consequences, including correlation. So the notion of local dilations was introduced to characterize local change of basis and adding auxiliary systems. Here, given two quantum uh, models, S delta and S, we see S delta is a local dilation of S written as greater than S delta if. There is a local isometry IA tensor IB mapping the actions of S to the actions of S delta tensor an auxiliary state. If this is the first time you uh, see this definition, it's quite technical, so please do not read it. I put it here, just want to show you how uh, complicated the definition is. The upshot is uh, if a quantum model S is given by um, change local basis of S delta, Or adding auxiliary system to S delta, then S can be locally dilated to S delta. Now we have all these ingredients. We can cook the standard definition. Uh, we see a quantum correlation P is a self-test for a class of quantum models C. If there exists a model S delta in this class, such that we call this an ideal model. Such that all other models in C for P can be locally dilated to this ideal model. So, intuitively speaking, this class C contains a unique quantum model as delta for P up to local dilations. Here,、uh, we use the term class. It's just refer to、uh, a collection of quantum models. This collection is too big. It's not even a set. So, we use class. Prototypical examples of Uh, classes of quantum models are class of、uh, all quantum models, or the class of projective quantum models, in which、uh, Alice and Bob's measurement operators are required to be projections, to be PVMs. We also have the class of、uh, full-rank quantum models, 
Well, the entangled state shared by Alice and Bob has four Schmidt rank. It is well known that the optimal correlations for CHSH game, tilted CHSH game, magic square game, and so on, are self-tests for the class of projective quantum models. For example, in CHSH, uh, you can take the ideal model to be uh, consists of uh, an EPR pair and uh, Alice and Bob from poly measurements. This standard definition and this applications of uh, this applications of these examples uh, have been very successful in different areas in quantum information. For example, in quantum cryptography, uh, self-testing has been used as a device-independent protocol to verify that a device can produce desired entangled state or perform commanded measurements. In quantum complexity theory, self-testing has been used to against dishonest provers. Self-testing is also a key to the recent breakthrough MIPS star equals RE, which has resolved coins embedding problem, one of the biggest problems in operator algebras. However, despite all those achievements, there are still some technical issues and subtle mathematical problems around the standard definition. First, this standard definition has an ad, uh, ad hoc nature. It is clear that to incorporate the auxiliary systems to state a uniqueness result, some type of equivalence between models is required. But why exactly this one using local dilations? In fact, since the concept of self-testing was introduced by Mayers and Yao 20 years ago, variants of these definitions have been used. Second, most of the examples, most of the self-testing protocols used in quantum cryptography, in quantum complexity theory, are often self-tests for projective quantum models only. Assume your device is performing PVMs, or assume it is performing PVMs on some larger systems with the help of Professor Steinsbring, uh, we, can, we can see that the device is trusted. But what if a malicious device, uh, an evil quantum prover, is performing non-projective measurements? So can we have a self-test for all quantum models instead of just self-test for projective quantum models? Another interesting question is, can we extend this idea of self-testing to some more general frameworks of quantum mechanics? For example, commuting operator framework. In a commuting operator model, Alice and Bob make compatible measurements on a single Hilbert space. The system can be infinite dimensional. So there is no tensor product structure in this framework. So it's not clear how to generalize this local isometries, local dilations to the commuting operator models. Lastly, as we have discussed before, self-testing has been used to prove big theorems in operator algebras, but itself lacks an operator algebraic interpretation. Here, uh, I want to mention that uh, Chris Dental, Houghton Lawson, and uh, Mashinska have made substantial progress on resolving the first issue of the standard definition by introducing this operational self-testing uh, using category theory. Here, to tackle all those problems, we propose an operator algebraic formulation of self-testing in terms of abstract states on C-star algebras. Let me remind you that uh, this two moment, I call it two moment, this two moment gives you the correlation by Bowen's rule, right? So this value is the same across all models for P because this gives you correlation. So th this value is independent of the choice of the models for P, right? So in our new definition, we see a quantum correlation P is a self-test for a class of quantum models C if any higher moment is also independent of the choice of the models for P. So this value is also the same across uh, all models for P in this class C. For experts in C-star algebras, you can read this theorem, you can read this definition as P is an abstract state self-test for C if there is a unique 
finite dimensional abstract state f on this C star algebra from the class C achieving P. So this algebra is the mean tensor product of the universal C star algebras generated by abstract P POVMs. An abstract state is just a normalized positive linear functional on this uh, C star algebra. Finite dimensional means the GNS construction of this abstract state is finite dimensional. So if uh, you are less familiar with uh, languages in C star algebra, don't worry. You can just treat this guy as, as a good friend whose name is me. A better name, of course. The punchline is um, this new definition resolved the first issue of the standard definition. We have a unique state, no up to anything. Now you may wonder uh, whether this new definition is equivalent to the standard one. The answer is yes. Our new formulation, this operator algebraic formulation, captures the standard one. So our first main result says that if P is an extremal quantum correlation and C is a closed class that contains a full rank model for P, then P is a self-test in the standard definition, standard sense, if and only if P is a self-test in our new formulation. Here, I'm not going to uh, go into details about what is a closed class. It is a very natural assumption of the class. And in fact, all of the classes we, are, we care about, we are interested in, like uh, the class of all quantum models, the class of projective quantum models, the class of full rank quantum models are all closed. And the condition that contains a full rank model for P is very crucial. It automatically holds for the class of all quantum models because given a quantum model, you can always restrict the model to its support without changing the correlation. But it does not necessarily hold for the class of projective quantum models. Kanyaski and Manshinska have constructed an example, a correlation based on trying state measurement for which every full rank quantum model is non-projective. This is a very interesting uh, example. So our, uh, our operator algebraic formulation also provides new perspectives and a better understanding of self-test. Let me remind you that the class of all quantum models is closed and also contains a full rank model. So this theorem applies to it. We show that if an extremal quantum correlation, P, is a self-test for the class of all quantum models, then first, every full rank quantum model for P is projective, or in other words, every quantum model for P is projective when restricted to the spot. This provides a new criterion for not being a self-test for all quantum models. For example, uh, the correlation given by Kanyaski and Manshinska is a self-test for the class of full-rank quantum models, but not a self-test for all quantum models, because in their example, every full-rank quantum model is non-projective. In this case, we also show that you can always find a full-rank projective idea model. This further shows that uh, being a self-test for all quantum models implies being a self-test for projective quantum models. Why? Suppose uh, your correlation is a self-test for all quantum models, then you can take a projective idea model, S theta. By definition, S theta is a local dilation of all other models for P, including all projective models. So by definition, it is a self-test for projective quantum models. Whether the other direction is true in general is still an open problem. However, we show that for two large classes of quantum correlations, synchronous correlations and binary correlations, these two are equivalent. Being a self-test for projective quantum models will imply being a self-test for all quantum models. If you are not familiar with all those terms and this slide makes no sense to you, uh, don't worry, it's easy to get lost. I nearly lost myself here. <laughs> the punchline is most examples that were known in quantum cryptography, in quantum complexity theory, as self-tests for projective quantum models. For example, CHSH, TLTH, CHSH, 
magic square are in fact self-tests for all quantum models. So this resolved the second issue of the standard definition. Now, our remaining task is to extend this notion of self-testing to the commuting operator framework, in which Alice and Bob make compatible measurements, there's a single Hilbert space, and the system can be infinite dimensional. It turns out that this operator algebraic formulation generalized naturally to this setting by simply changing the algebra. Let me remind you that our friend Ming characterize quantum models. Luckily, we have another friend whose name is Max. He's taking care of commuting operator models. So naturally, we define a commuting operator correlation P is a commuting operator self-test for the class of commuting operator model if there is a unique abstract state on this Max tensor C-star algebra. We also show that, in fact, most common examples we know, CHSH, tilted CHSH, magic square, are in fact self-tests for commuting operator models. We also show that uh, if a correlation is a self-test for finite dimensional quantum models, even and only if it, it is a self-test for quantum models, what does this mean? It means, um, Although this definition is defined for quantum models, which can, for commuting operator models, which can be infinite dimensional, but when you return to the finite dimensional case, this generalized definition is still consistent with the standard one. There are still some, uh, many open problems around this new definition, this generalized uh, self-test for commuting operator models. For example, um, I show you that CHSH, TLT, CHSH are, actually, are in fact uh, self-test for uh, commuting operator models, but those correlations are still quantum correlations. Can we have a real commuting operator self-test? So some correlation which can only be achieved by infinite dimensional uh, models and is a self-test for commuting operator models. Also, uh, is it possible that for some correlation, it has a unique finite dimensional state, but multiple infinite dimensional state. Or in other words, uh, whether, there is a, whether there is a commuting operator, uh, whether, whether there is a correlation uh, is a self-test for quantum models, but not a self-test for commuting operator models. And some problems in operator algebras uh, share sim similar intuitions as uh, self-testing. For example, mm, whether some algebra has a unique trivial state seems related to whether some synchronous correlation uh, has, uh, whether some synchronous, synchronous correlation is a self-test. So they both ask whether you have this uniqueness. So having a notion of um, self-testing for commuting operator models um, also raises possible connections with operator algebras. To sum up, uh, we have a new formulation of uh, self-test, which is a unique state, no up to anything. We show that for two large classes of uh, quantum correlations, synchronous correlations, binary correlations, uh, self-test for all quantum models and self-test for projective quantum models are equivalent. The, one of the advantage of this uh, operator uh, community uh, Operator algebraic formulation is that um, it generalized naturally to the commuting operator framework by simply changing the mean tensor product C-star algebra to the max tensor product C-star algebra. Another issue we don't address in this work is robust self-testing. Sometimes you can only observe some quantum correlation uh, that is close to the expected one. For example, CHSH correlation contains irrational entries. So you cannot observe ir irrational probabilities in your lab. So what happens for a model that achieve a correlation that is close to the expected one? Is this model still close to the ideal model in some sense? What is a definition, what is a formulation, or what is a uh, operator algebraic formulation for, uh, for robust self-test? 
those are uh, th this is some question we were wondering, and we we'll leave it for future work. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's have some questions. I think first here and here. <laughs> but. Yes, uh, thanks a lot for the very nice talk. So there are uh, some uh, generalized notions of uh, self-testing which have been introduced. So for instance, trying to self-test uh, n-partite states with more than n parties, introducing new states, uh, yeah, right. or uh, looking at self-testing in other scenarios in which you have networks or several independent states. So do you think that this could be generalized to these kind of scenarios? Well, it's a very good question. So first, I think all those generalizations also consider robust, robust version, right? So if you go to the exact version, I think maybe you follow the same spirit. You can just change the algebra, like uh, for multi-party -part uh, scenario, maybe you can do several tensor product of these sister algebras. So that's my guess. You had a question? Yeah. Um, you talked about finite dimensional commuting operator. Yeah. So how do you define, define finite dimensional for this Max tensor product? Ah. Like, like, what is the Schmidt rank in this case? So, so it's, it's not finite dimensional algebra, it's like the state. Well, the, the, uh, an abstract state is finite dimensional if the GNS construction is finite dimensional. So as long as you have a finite dimensional commuting operator framework, then it will induce a finite dimensional state on this max tensor C style algebra. Yeah. So it's, it's, uh, it doesn't see that any state on this one is finite dimensional, right? Yeah. But do you have a notion of a Schmidt rank in this case, or? Uh, not really. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thanks for the talk. So you've been very um, careful to talk about the class of quantum models and not about the set of quantum models. So for, for the physicists in the audience who are, may not, you know, be so familiar with the foundations of math, what goes wrong if I mistakenly talk about the set of quantum models? Okay, so first, there's, there's no set of sets. Okay, so given any set, you can construct a Hilbert space. You can view this Hilbert space as an ancillary space and added to it. So this collection contains all sets, which is not a set. Uh, thank you for the excellent talk. Uh, I am interested in, uh, because in your theorems, even here we can see it, you have this uh, assumption of extremality and I am interested how important is this uh, assumption, namely uh, do you know if your new definition of abstract self-testing implies extremality or do you have some counterexamples? Oh, that's a very good question. Well, um, the short answer is I don't know. Uh, the long answer is uh, I have three points I want to make. So, so first, the intuition behind the self-test is uh, you have a unique state underlying this, this correlation. So if a uh, quantum correlation is non-extremal, it has a convex decomposition, right? Convex combination, or maybe different convex combinations. So maybe you have different choice of models. So it's hard to make a unique quantum model. The second one, uh, the second point I want to make is that in this theorem, this direction, P is a self-test in the standard sense, implies P is an abstract self-test for C, does not require extremal point. So you can prove this without this assumption. Right. And uh, uh, the third point I want to make is that uh, here we do self-test uh, in terms of correlations. But uh, if you do self-test in terms of non-local games, then in that case, every co correlation should be extreme. Uh, if a game is a self-test, then the correlation, the optimal correlation should be extreme. Yeah, but we do not know any uh, example or counterexample to say uh, you can or you cannot self-test extreme points. Uh, thanks for the really nice talk. Um, uh, maybe this question is from a place of ignorance, but uh, do you think what you the work you've done can be extended to uh, self-testing for algebraic QFTs? So things uh, like sorry, sorry, self -test. for algebraic Q, uh, quantum field theories, such as like self-testing the entanglement in a vacuum state in 
QFTs because they're also the mathematical structure might be similar. Yeah, but I'm not familiar with this field. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. Sorry. But you can teach me in the field. <laughs> All right, I think we have time just for one last question and then we'll have the five minutes for the change. <laughs> okay, so, uh, yes, uh, thank you for the nice presentation, nice work. Uh, yeah, as you mentioned, we can consider so more than two parties by maybe adding some more tensor uh, products. Oh, that's my guess. Right, and uh, actually, well, when you have more than two parties and you do at least the usual self-test, right, then you have one additional kind of degree of freedom that shows up, which is the uh, transposition. And so do you have any guess whether this could be resolved as well? Or do you think, like, well, that's a question now, or do we still have to use this up to uh, uh, statement there? Uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. All right. On that note, uh, let's thank <laughs> you mean again. And, uh,